This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The conference finals are officially underway for both the NBA and the NHL. Game 2 is coming up across Thursday and Friday along with Game 1 of the NHL series between the Oilers and the Stars. We're going to break down all four conference final series, let you know where we're seeing value across the games on Thursday and Friday by talking to Tom Vecchio and picking his brain about the next two nights of games. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned, by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Find his work at FanDuel Research and, of course, on the FanDuel Research podcast feed and here on Covering the Spread as well. Tom, we are on to largely Game 2's uh, conference finals underway. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Yeah, we are in for a great set of games over the next few days. Uh, we're coming off of a great set of uh, games. I think there's some really interesting angles to be approaching not only tonight, but moving forward throughout the rest of the series. I'm ready to roll. Yeah, both of our teams lost last night. My Wolves, your Rangers. But hey, I think underlying numbers still okay. So I think we're both still feeling fine, despite the fact it's off to a bit of a rocky start. Yeah, my view coming in against the Panthers, you know, specifically was they just got to win one out of two at home. I didn't, ex- you know, don't expect them to win, go 2-0 and at home against a, a team as good as the Panthers. So just win on Friday, 1-1 one, one series is what I would expect, uh, regardless if they win the first, win the second, doesn't matter. Just keep it tied and, you know, go game by game from there. Yeah, uh, so we'll see how it goes, but... We'll talk about both those game twos later on today. We'll dig into all that here, starting with the NBA in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast tomorrow. I'm going to take a look at NFL Week 1 spreads at FanDuel Sportsbook and let you know where I see value based on my numbers and whether you want to bet that now or hold off. We'll go through that whole thought process, which is a process to be sure. We'll go through that tomorrow here on the show, taking that first look at NFL Week number 1. A lot of good stuff coming up later on this week, but also on the feed right now, you can find our preview of the Indy 500, the Coke 600, and the Monaco Grand Prix. We had Dr. Nick Giffen on of the Action Network, breaking down his thoughts on the Indy 500 and the Coke 600. And then I talked my favorite bet for the Monaco Grand Prix as well. Find that on the Covering the Spread podcast feed along with FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. The NBA Conference Finals are here, and you can get in on the action with FanDuel because right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to use on same-game parlays, live bets, championship futures, and so much more. There is no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets. That expires seven days after receipt. Not available in North Carolina. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53 53- 342 in Arizona, 1 888 789 7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1 800 9 with it in Indiana, 1 800 522 4700, visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1 877 770 stop in Louisiana, visit MD Gambling Health Org in Maryland, 1 800 gambler.net in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's begin things on the NBA side of things. We have one game for tonight. That is the Pacers versus Celtics game number two. And for game two at FanDuel Sportsbook, Celtics favored by nine. And the total in this game is 225. And Tom, game one of this series was fascinating where the Celtics pulled through with the win. The Pacers probably potentially should have won this game, though. So let's talk about that overall first. Did game one alter your view of this series overall at all? 
Uh, to an extent, but it, it kind of goes along with what I said when we did the preview the other day where, you know, I said which style, uh, which team style would prevail where, you know, the, the, the Celtics want to drag the Pacers down and, to, and force them to play a half court offense, which is not what we saw. You know, and I said on the pod, you know, there are going to be times where the Pacers offense shines through, whether it's for a quarter or a half or a full game, which is, you know, what we saw in game one. So what can the Celtics do to hinder their ability to get out on the fast break and run because that's where the Pacers thrive. And I talked about like, you know, increasing the possessions, increasing the variance, which puts the Celtics in a bad spot, which is exactly what we saw. So I expect that to be somewhat of the same, but like tuned down a little bit where the Pacers still have to do their thing, but the Pacers, uh, the Celtics will try to keep that under control just a little bit more, force them into a half court offense just a little bit more. It's not going to be a, a complete shift away. It's going to be like game by game, quarter by quarter. They have to move things in their direction. But ultimately, the Pacers can hang with the, the Celtics is my overall point. And we're seeing that reflected in the market because in game one, I think the spread is 11 and it's now nine for game number two. Total in this game is 225. And it seems like uh, people are pretty interested in the Pacers for game number two. So Tom, any bets stand out to you for game two specifically at FanDuel Sportsbook? So I'll, you know, immediately be looking to take live unders. I think under 225 is fine, but I think live unders is where I'm going to be most interested, especially if there's a, a, a bit of scoring early. So if it gets up to 230, I will absolutely be under uh, the live under there. But I specifically want to go to Miles Turner under 16 and a half points, staying at minus 120. You know, he's been good. He's been, he was efficient in the regular season. He's just far too efficient from three right now, specifically in the playoffs. He's shooting 47% from three in the playoffs as a center. In the regular season, he was at 35%. He, it's a, you know, he's a center that does step out and take threes, but shooting them at nearly 50% in the playoffs is way too high when it's significantly above the season average. And I think the Celtics have to do what they can to limit the threes, not just from Turner, but overall. I mean, we saw the both teams shoot 53 and 47 percent in game one, and we're knocking down 13 and 15 threes. That rate of scoring is just not going to continue, and I don't expect it to continue from what realistically should be their at best third score behind Siakam, Halliburton, and then Turner. If it isn't uh, Nemhard, if it isn't Obi Toppin, if it isn't uh, T.J. McConnell, like Turner should not be a primary score for them. So it's all about the under. And that correlates well with what you discussed as far as like wanting the live under in this game. We're expecting a bit of a regression in terms of the Pacers going full Pacers in this game. And if they can't go full Pacers, it's harder for a guy like Turner to get to the the numbers he needs to rack up this, given the amount of efficiency he needs to get there. Right. And he, and to be clear, he was a very efficient in, just throughout his career, not just this year, but he's been a, a very efficient scorer. Because he's a center, he's just getting easy touches. He can shoot theoretically 50% from the field, but the, just the percentage of it should not be so much from downtown. And you know, again, if I'm not expecting points overall on the Celtics to adjust, it's going to be limiting some chances from not just him, but everybody. Is there anything matchup wise that leads you to think that Turner has an increased role in this series? Or do you think that game it, one is a bit of an outlier? It might be because Porzingis isn't there and, yeah. you know, they can drag and. Turner can sit on the three-point line to drag Horford out, which in theory, Porzingis would be a better perimeter defender. So if it happens again and then Porzingis doesn't play game three, maybe I'll be on the other side depending on what happens. Sure. But like there is a, a, a route where Turner just continues to be so good. Right. Okay. So Tom is under Miles Turner under 16 and a half points. That is minus 122 as of right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's talk about game two between the Wolves and the Mavericks. Let's talk about game one first because – it seemed like a bit of an off night for the Wolves defense. It didn't seem like they really got their like their energy until super late in that game. So, and that was, you know, after the, the Mavs made their run, got the lead. Then we saw typical Wolves defense. So same question as with the Pacers and Celtics, anything for you, Tom, from game one, that altered your view of the series overall? Not really. I expected this to be the lower of the two, the lower scoring of the two series. So I think that's where we're going to be in line. I would say the the overall lack of efficiency and production from Edwards is notable because we saw it at the end of the the Nuggets series and right. if you know the Mavs learn something from that that is something that they can apply going forward and that would put me in a spot to say what we saw from Edwards in game 7 it says okay he's not scoring a ton 
which means he has to do it in other areas, which is the assist and rebounds. So if we're learning from what we saw at the end of the last series and moving forward, it would be Edwards underscoring potentially, and then looking to some of those alternate markets. I will say last night, six total field goal attempts, six total field goals made from Edwards. Five of them are threes. Yeah. That, that ratio is not going to stay the same. So his under threes market right now is under three and a half is sitting at minus 180. I don't love that number. I have seen it at minus 162 out there. The game also isn't until tomorrow. So there is some obviously some time for the market to move. So his points prop would be fine, but under threes, he's not going to be knocking down five threes a game. The and point if, prop right now uh, for Anthony Edwards is uh, 26 and a half. Under is even money. And, you know, you were talking about this at times during that Nuggets series, too, where you talked about the defense, talked about how swarming they were, where Edwards needed to kind of adjust. And he did. Um, he had, like, they won the game, and he still went under 28 and a half points. He had 27 right. in that game you talked about. So, like, they could still be productive even with him dishing and finding other ways. Do you think we see a similar thing here? Any interest for you in one of those combo markets taking in, taking into account the fact that he may be adjusting? Yeah, I mean, that might have to be the case, the rebounds plus assists. Uh, and again, if, if if I'm thinking about this being the lower scoring in the series, the rebounds will be there. Obviously, there's just a, a route that he just doesn't get a ton of rebounds because Gobert, Towns, McDaniels, whoever else just steals them from him. Um, but the assist should be there because if they're doubling him, as we saw in the Nuggets series, that's where we saw Jaden McDaniels have some big games, knock down some threes. Nas Reed comes off the bench, can knock down some outside shots. So the combo market would probably be the best spot to go for Edwards. Yeah, his assist prop by itself is five and a half over is minus 130. But then the rebound plus assist market there, Edwards is at 11 and a half over minus 132 under is plus 104. Preference for you having seen those numbers now? Uh it's it's got to be the it's got to be the combo market. It can't just okay. be one or the other. Uh, okay. And again, I'm not expecting that many threes from him. So he's got to do it in other areas, which is be efficient and effective on offense by distributing. Yeah. So sounds like we're on the same same wavelength as we were for that Nugget series, where yeah. the defense is putting a lot of a lot of eyes, a lot of bodies on Edwards, and he has to adjust, and he's done that before. So uh, taking a look at potentially unders on points for Anthony Edwards and then overs on some combo markets that take into account the fact he may be looking elsewhere uh, with, with the ball going forward. Correct. Let's talk now about the NHL, Tom, where we have the game number one between the Oilers and the Stars is going to get underway for tonight. And... Let's talk about the series overall first before digging into game number one for tonight. The Stars, uh, currently right now, FanDuel Sportsbook, minus 125 to win this series. We know you've liked them all year, but how do you think they match up specifically with Edmonton? I think they match up well. I've said before about the Stars, they are awesome on defense. I think the clear advantage in this series comes down to goaltending for the Stars and the depth that they have on defense. And if you've been a fan of the NHL for years and you've watched the Oilers, no matter who they have in goal, like they always happen to have like an Oilers moment on defense or an Oilers moment in goal, which I would equate to like potentially like a, a, a Josh, a Josh Allen comparison or like <laughs> when you watch Josh Allen, sometimes you're like, is he going to die for the first down and fumble the ball? Is he going to throw an interception? Like we're waiting for that Josh Allen moment every game. That kind of thing happens with the Oilers' defense and goaltending. You're like, eh, that was a bit weird, but that's kind of par for the course. So the Stars are just a far more structured team. They're just uh, just better on defense. Jake Onger is significantly better than Stuart Skinner. So I, I will take the Stars to win the series. I, I have them on Stanley Cup future. So the, the match will come down to what will the Stars do to slow down McDavid and Dreisaitl? And they did that in the previous series versus McKinnon and Mika Rantanen. So they can handle a top end talent. It's just how effective will be the, how effective can they do that on a game by game basis? Because Dreisaitl and McDavid are going to have multi-point games. It's just going to happen. Does it change when it's two guys at the shutdown? Cause that sounds like a tougher task than, than what it, they've had recently. It so does. And, and the stars, if I remember correctly, they are in the playoffs. I think they are 11th on the penalty kill which is obviously not good. It's just 11 of the 16 teams. So they're right. the worst of the four teams remaining. So taking penalties when they have not been good on the penalty kill with a historically good power play on the other side for the Oilers, that is a dangerous combination. So they have to be disciplined in terms of the penalties or multi-goal games will be happening for Dreisaitl or Hyman or McDavid or someone. 
Okay, so you think that the Stars are a value of minus 125 to win the series, despite the fact the Oilers are a very tough matchup for them? Yes. Perfect. Okay, let's talk about game number one specifically then. For tonight, where the Stars are minus 130 to win, Oilers at plus 108, and the total is at 6.5, uh, heavily juiced towards the under at minus 142. What are you seeing for game number one specifically, Tom? I would say that this series would be the higher scoring of the two series, as I you know said with Celtics Pacers. Like One of them is just going to be a little bit higher scoring. I think we start off with, uh, you know, maybe some games that end four to three, maybe five to three. Uh, and then that was trend down tonight. I want to be looking to Leon Dreisaitl over two and a half shots. It's sitting at minus 120. Uh, this is a player that comes in with 45 shots in 12 games. He's going over this. Only two of the games have gone to overtime. So we have to count for the 60 minute market. So he's routinely putting up plenty of shots in games that do not go to overtime. Uh, where obviously he's a, a primary shooter for them. He's probably going to be on the second forward line. They're going to split up McDavid and Drysaddle. So they have McDavid on one, Drysaddle on two. Drysaddle will be on the, the side for the power play, taking his chances. Uh, they have to come out firing just because the way the Stars play, they're super structured. They do everything right, essentially, except taking penalties, I guess, and the penalty kill. And just he's just always going to be in a spot to shoot because they have too many options with Hyman in front of the net, McDavid facilitating everything. It's just as simple as a line as we could possibly get to start the series. Okay, that again is on Leon Dreisaitl, over two and a half shots, minus 120 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Pulling for the stars for you, Tom. Hoping they uh, can get yeah. this one done uh, to keep that future ticket chugging along. Also pulling for you on Friday night as we get game number two here between the Panthers and the Rangers. In game two, specifically Panthers, minus 115. The Rangers are at minus 104. Total, five and a half reflecting what you said, where you expect a low-scoring series. We saw that in game one last night, where the Panthers won 3 nothing. So, overall thoughts for you, based on what you saw in game number one last night. The Rangers got outshot as they have been, I think it was in seven of 10 games in the playoffs coming into last night. So I guess that this would make uh, eight of 11. Now they've been outshot. Uh, it's, it's kind of been their calling card where they give up a ton of shots to Carolina, but the Rangers always have the advantage in high quality shots, high danger chances. They had higher expected goals last night, which is kind of what we saw in the Carolina series where they give up a ton of volume, but ultimately the quality lies with the Rangers. So they need to step up the offensive pressure uh florida has done a fantastic job whether it's against boston whether it's against tampa in the first round and essentially just suffocating opposing offenses and preventing them from getting a ton of shots so if the rangers aren't getting a ton of shots overall their forwards are really being you know the clamps are down on them i want to go to a defender because at a, at a certain point any shot is a good shot and if they have to get something to the nets it's probably going to come from a defender so that means Adam Fox over one and a half shots. It's only sitting at minus 114. He's their top defender. He's on the first power play. He's been over this mark in four straight. And that's ultimately what they need. They need any and all shots because if the defense from Florida is focusing on Artemi Panarin, on Chris Kreider, on uh, Mika Zibanejad, Vinny Trocek, all these players that are, you know, their top forwards, they're going to have space at the point just to fire at the net. So one and a half for one of the best defenders in the league is a very fair line. That is Adam Fox again for this Rangers Panthers game over one and a half shots minus 114 at FanDuel Sports because the Rangers struggling to get shots off the entire playoff series hasn't hurt them yet, uh, but they got to pick things up here pretty soon. They want to take down the Panthers in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's all that we have here for today on covering the spread. Tom, want to give you a big thank you once again for swinging by for today. Uh, good luck to you sweating out the stars tonight and the Rangers tomorrow. Enjoy the basketball and the hockey. We'll talk to you once again in the very near future. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. I am on Twitter at Jim Saunders. You can also find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Tomorrow, NFL week number one spreads uh, that I see value on. Check out the Indy 500, Monaco Grand Prix, and Coke 600 show already up on your podcast feed, FanDuel TV Plus, and the FanDuel YouTube page. Good luck to all of your bets for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 